before issuing a caution for slow play. And actually, there's no definite number of seconds to do that. So, uh, no, this seminar is about how did we come to put stalling and slow play in the rules. So, in your opinion, which infraction was put in the rules first? Stalling or slow play? Who believes it is slow play? Who believes it is stalling? Yep, it was stalling. Why? That's what we're going to see. In the beginning, there was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Playing at the kitchen table, except when, except when mom is saying dinner's ready, you don't really have a time limit to finish your game. <laughs> so, there were no real concerns about time limit. So everything was fine, and you would not spend half an hour on each of your turns to have the other uh, to win that game because it was pointless. So that's it. Bearing making your opponent bored, slow play and stalling are irrelevant if there's no time limit to the match. Uh, why? Do uh, magic matches have a time limit? Because tomorrow, if we do not give a time limit, we will finish on Monday. <laughs> not Sunday, Monday. That's, I believe, even more true with Legacy. Uh, so we have to set up a time limit. Uh, Another reason, there were a couple alternate solutions that are used in other trading card games, playing only one game, with an in-game tiebreaker to know who wins. This is just not what Wizards of the Coast wanted to do with the game. If you go with only one game, there's no point with sideboarding. And Sideboarding is an essential part of magic. So, for plenty of reasons, we had to set uh, a time limit. And from that moment, <laughs> Things exploded. As soon as the time limit, as the time limit was brought on the tournament scene, it was very easy to abuse. As soon as I have won game one, unless I have to go on playing, I have won the match. If there was no stalling, I could just say, land, I keep priority. It's going to be a bit long, sorry. It's going to last 37 minutes. <laughs> bit boring. So, immediately, stalling got added to the rules to make sure people were playing magic. Um, you could say, well, why is there a time limit? Well, we've seen a couple, uh, we've seen a couple reasons. What's important to keep in mind is bringing a time limit in. It was not a choice. It was a necessity. For those of you who attended my seminar about uh, improperly determining a winner in London, this is exact same reasoning. At no point it was a conscious choice that was bringing 
adding something to the game. No, it was just a bare necessity, otherwise the game was pretty fucked up. Um, and yes, finally, if a player leading 1-0 can just wait for 37 minutes, what's the point of having sideboards? So everything is kind of uh, integrated with everything else. Couple facts. We want, uh, we want magic games, magic matches to be best of three. We don't want to finish day one on Monday. So, yes, we have to set up a time limit. <laughs> so, Stalling got added to the rules. Definition of Stalling, that's a uh, copy-paste from the latest IPG I had on my computer. <laughs> I think it was 2013, but anyway, it didn't change recently. So, um, A player intentionally plays slowly in order to take advantage of the time limit. Philosophically speaking, message-wise, it just means, okay, you're winning 1-0, but you need to go on playing Magic. We would like you to play Magic so that your opponent can play Magic and you both have fun. Um, and from that moment, in this new beginning, there was nothing again. Everything was fine. Uh, and afterwards, it exploded again. Uh, because Stalling did not address untimed matches. And here's a little story that happened at the PTQ in France back to 1990. Back to the times there were still a couple dinos on, basically. So, there was one player it took pretty much 10 to 15 minutes for each of his teams. So one player in that top eight was taking pretty much 10 to 15 minutes for each of his turns. And when the judge was saying, could you play faster? The guy was like, there is nothing in the rules that prevents me from doing this. So right now, it would be like, maybe, but I'm the head judge and now you're going to do this. Let's project back to that time. This was not... I don't think, I did not double check, but I don't think there was even a mention in the rules that the head judge can do whatever he wants if he believes it's needed. So the guy said, rules, I'm right, you can't do anything. So long story short, this PDQ ended at 6 in the morning, and we are not talking about a, a 1,500-player PTQ. Uh, with 11 rounds and stuff like that. No, no, we're talking about a 60-player PTQ or something like this. Six in the morning. Very soon, very soon after, the DCI said, uh, let there be slow play. At some point, there was a need that judges could force a player into playing faster. So, slow play and stalling. Uh, actually, they have limited interactions. I've uh, copy-pasted again the definition of stalling. A player intentionally plays slowly in order to take advantage of the time limit. This does not mean a player intentionally commits the slow play infraction. You can stall in three seconds. A three seconds time loss can be stalling. It's obviously an extreme example, but I go on that a bit after. Actually, 
there is only one interaction between slow play and stalling. I'm winning, I'm well, like two. I'm winning one O, and I don't want. I want to win one O, so I'm gonna play slowly, which implies I am stalling because I want to take advantage of the time limit. Or that's one one. I don't have an exceptional board position, but well, I should be able to. I should be able to survive until the end of the time. This makes me think that I need to check when additional times got added to uh, to the tournament rules. I when I prepared it, I did not think about it, but that could be interesting. So that's pretty much the sole two cases where a player commits slow play, and that ends up in stalling. And now you've got the more interesting cases, the non-slow play stalling cases. If you go through the examples of stalling in the IPG, there are five examples. Two of them are slow play stalling and three of them are non-slow play stalling, which quite implies that stalling is not that related to slow is not as related to slow play as we could believe. So um, that three second stalling I was talking about is pretty much I'm gonna slow roll a little bit to make sure I get additional turn one. So I'm playing against someone he says go. I'm gonna pause for a couple seconds to make sure that time is announced while it's still technically his end of turn. I don't I I don't have to pause for too long. Three seconds is enough. But what's a benefit for me? If I have turn one, it does not have turn five. So by pausing three seconds, he lost one turn. Um, Non-slow play stalling. If I take two minutes and 59 seconds to use my sideboard, if I want to do that in order to not start game three, that is stalling. But it's not slow play. Slow play is three minutes. Um, and, the, and the final one, I receive a warning for slow play, I appeal that warning in order to get more time. This is not exactly stalling, but it kind of falls, it intuitively falls in there, but it's definitely, definitely not slow play. I'm just making an appeal. Um, maybe I slow play the end of uh, the end of the seminar. So, what what's very important to to understand with slow play and stalling in that there is no need for a slow play infraction to have been constituted to issue a stalling penalty. S uh, slow play is something that you commit unintentionally, that you don't realize. Stalling is a conscious I was about to say action, but it's more often a conscious non-action that you perform in order to gain an advantage. Um, 
back to uh, I can't remember which proto it was but at some point uh, I went to the head just to say I'm fairly certain that this guy is stalling and the answer was did you want him for slow play uh, that might be pointless because if you believe that the guy is intentionally eating up the clock at some point you need to make that decision whether he's doing it or not if you believe it's an intentional go with slow play but if if you believe it's intentional and you give him a warning for slow play it's like it's likely that it will have benefit him uh, especially in that situation where the slow play warning happens maybe in extra turns because if it happens during the first 50 minutes they get additional turns but if the slow play warnings happens in extra turns they don't So yes, that could be a warning. It's going to be tracked. That's fine. But it might be too late for the purpose of uh, making that uh, uh, making that game fair. Any questions? No. Yeah. When I see a board, I see graver hands, uh, I can understand what decks they play. Uh, it's maybe a combo of two or three or one, two, two, three, 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 Um, so, qu the question is, uh, should I take the decks, in, the kind of decks that are played into account to, to identify stalling? That's yes. it? Uh, it will help. For slow play, we do not uh, take uh, the game state into account. Instinctively, we will, but in theory, we should not. Stalling is about evaluating intent by the player. So at some point, you need to understand what is going on. And if at some point, you can evaluate what they are trying to achieve, then that is additional data that you can use to make a decision. So basically, you don't have to, but it, if you feel you can do it, use that. It's very, uh, stoning is not, uh, stoning, just like slow play is a very subjective infraction. So, any elements you can use, use them. Especially as uh, stalling is a form of cheating. And for cheating, you use any information that you have access to. What about a control mirror? When someone has a clear, better board position than the other one, and um, they are going towards the 50-minute 50, 50 mark, and you know, and maybe the player himself knows, that he cannot win. And um, so he takes 
his normal time, but he does not concede in this situation. Would you consider this stalling? Yes. Th there is no need for uh, for slow play yeah. to concede it's stalling. You, you can't force a player into conceding. Uh, that's, that's really a gray area. One thing that happened back to last Grand Prix Bochum, player has no, has, uh, he resolved the ultimate of Tamillo, and each end of turn is playing Sphinx Revelation for zero. <laughs> Yeah, or, or whatever. Basically, uh, uh, the situation was uh, opponent played first emirate, emirate, no, no, uh, slot against twice to remove all the kills. But the player did manage to resolve Tamiyo's ultimate and he's like, I'm playing normally, I'm just playing Sphinx Revelation for zero. Uh, can you elaborate a bit on the strategical interest of that play? Uh, uh, so it would be good that you make the game state progress, so afterwards I think you switch to Azarius Charm for doing nothing. <laughs> so, was he playing slowly? No. Was he aiming at eating up the clock? Yes. That's stalling. So I think that kind of answers your question. Obviously, this was a very clear case, but if at some point... But the best thing you can do in such a situation, you take the player apart and you're like, okay, so how can you win this game? My <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yes, uh, it was a rhetorical question, I mean, to, for the process of investigation. Uh, you ask him, you, you need to investigate to know what he intends to do. If you believe he has a legitimate way to do these actions, fine. If at some point you believe, it's a matter of what you believe, that is just trying to eat up the time, like with the Sphinx Revelation or Adarius Sham for doing nothing, then it's probably stalling. Yes. Yeah, but uh, if he's making, like, he could, he could not win, right? But he can draw the game by making actions that actually do something, like making, for example, the, play, the other player plays Twitter. The other player plays like Super Berry or just yeah. Sphinx Revelation for four to win life on the card. That, that's okay if he could not win. Again, this is what this is what you believe and the, and this is why you should investigate on something like this. There is no uh, there is no physical evidence of stalling. If at some point you can, you, you make a ruling based on what is the most probable. So, basically, you have fewer cards than your opponent in your deck, right? Yeah. You win 1-0, right? Your opponent has no point in drawing cards because he has seen your deck, and he knows that you can't kill him anymore. And if the guy is like, he could screw up, at that point you go, fail. If you believe that, I don't. And what I mean? So, my, my what I mean is, you're actually playing the game, you're actually making things that change the game state, I mean, you're not playing... Sphinx Revelation for zero? No, 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 not that example. I mean, making a Sphinx Revelation for four, or playing Super Mario to kill creatures, uh -huh. but your goal is to draw the game. 
because you, you can't win. As long as you are making actions that are relevant to the game state, that's fine. That's fine? Okay, that's fine. If the game state is progressing somehow and you're not playing slowly, that's fine. We do not force players into conceding a game that is lost. What Stoli addresses pretty much a clear-cut situation like the Sphinx Revelation for zero when the guy has to lose eventually and is just trying to not to using the clock. That is Stoli. Like I said, here we've got the two cards which are events, and we spend uh, maybe 10 seconds for uh, working and prosperity. It's funny, I can be bluffing. Is there a time to say whether they are bluffed? Maybe. <laughs> you, you're going to need to investigate to investigate that a bit more. Uh, at some point you can caution him for slow play and see what's going on. Uh, uh, a story that happened to me back well, four years ago already. So uh, this player playing extremely fast because he's got the board position. At some point, there's an unfortunate misbind click arriving in the middle of, of, de uh, of declare attacker's step that completely crushes his board. And on the turn after, oh no, sorry, it was a Sion of Una. The fairy plus one plus one to everything. There was, there was, there was some beat up some tokens, so the guy loses the entire board, basically. And the turn after, the, play, uh, the fairy player uh, goes misbind click. And it was back to the time they were still uh, mana birds. And the player starts thinking whether he should take some mana uh, in, his, in his pool. Which was kind of legit. And at some point, I tell the player, I think you need to take a decision. And the guy explains to me that, come on, it's complicated because I need to make a decision before I draw a card. To which I reply, yeah, still you need to make a decision. That could just be slow play. Except that right before that, the guy took a look at how much time was left in the was left in the in the round. So that was a hint. And at, at that point I choose to set my limit to if he argues again, um, I'm gonna give plus two minutes for the ruling and if he argues on the time, he's out. So I give plus two minutes. He thought about arguing and I think he realized before arguing that, well, maybe top 16 was much better than going out. <laughs> so, he ended up top 16. So, yes, it could be a bluff. Uh, in that case, it was not exactly a bluff, but he had a decision to make. Was that the decision of making your opponent believe you have something in hand or to uh, take mana before throwing. Mana pool did not empty it at that, at that time either. <laughs> so, that's quite similar. So, that's a hint that could be stolen. You need to investigate some more around that to, to get more hints and afterwards make a decision. But that's the kind of situation where you can just go with a caution for slow play and see where things... It's, it's actually uh, it's, uh, lightning the fire. So let, let's create a small flame and let's see if, if it ignites or not. Depends on the player.
What do you think when you see a Goblin Child Elsher deck in the turrets? No. No mirror. The Goblin Child Elsher deck versus Rock. But, and with it, what? Uh, with versus Rock in Legacy. Like uh, Canadian Threshold? Yes. yes. Okay. So uh, Threshold versus Belcher and they're in the turrets. What do you think? <laughs> Uh, I think you're going to need to be a bit more specific about what I should think. Well, this happened to me as a player. I was playing Rock, my opponent played uh, Belcher, and we ended up in the turns. Uh, I told him a lot of times, play faster, he didn't. I called the judge, he said, he sat beside me and he said, I cannot see any slow play. <laughs> I don't. I don't have a good answer. Uh, maybe uh, it's maybe is pretty much the best, and uh, that's that, that's a kind of situation where it's very difficult uh, to to make to make a decision. What I can say is that. The answer of I can't see any slow play is probably not great because this is not the core of the issue. It's not great, but because plenty of judges believe that stalling is intentional slow play, and we've seen that it's not it's not what the rules say. So uh, Yes, obviously, if you're play, if you if you're playing an all-in combo, it's much better if you lose game two very uh, uh, very far, uh, very late in the round. Yes, obviously. Does that mean there is stoning? Maybe. Is there an easy way to investigate that? Probably not. Are there solutions? Not that I can think of at the moment. But let, let's put things another way. What do you think the judge should have done? Well, with this kind of combo deck, I think when I play this combo deck, it is not possible to go to the turn. Either you win fast or you lose within the first 10 minutes. Because at some point, there is no uh, chance of winning with this deck anymore especially against the deck which is playing for it. So, from my point of view, this was stalling. Yeah, I, I understand. What about station is very clear. There is, uh, what about station is very clear. This is the suits, uh, the combo, uh, you can't uh, Okay, if I draw, 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 two camps, then repeat. Yeah. It could be not, it couldn't be a stalling if uh, I mean, I think he could be overthinking, just overthinking all the plays. I mean, uh, I have to play this, but he could have this counter or this stifle or this. So, yeah. so if you overthink with a deck, you can actually go into turns, but it should be a slow play on that point, not stable. So, one, one interesting uh, question, where did you... Where did the judge stay? Next to you or next to him? Next to me. Okay. Yeah. That's, that obviously makes it a bit more complicated to try to evaluate stalling. <laughs> yeah. Like, if he's going and tries to evaluate what's going on, I, I've never played Belshaw. Like, I like to play Magic, actually. But... <laughs> Although I dislike multiplayer, but you know, two players is an acceptable multi instead of one. Uh, but yeah, most probably the best way to go in such a situation is to take regular looks at both hands, trying to understand options uh, and if they have. Bluffing is okay for two, three turns afterwards it becomes a bit more complicated to consistently bluff. But, 
lightning sets. Oh, I'm, I'm going to talk about that number of seconds for slow play, but this is this is a reason why we are not quantifying slow play because if we were if we were it would lead us to a it would prevent us from saying can you play faster but that's that's only 15 seconds or maybe you anyway play faster because that's objective it gives you some um some freedom to adjust the situation to make it roughly work especially for these kind of situations uh, about the previous situation where a player cannot win but why to not lose um, and but he, he know that he cannot win uh, for example he will make every turn a single fall in front of the library or much uh, what do you think about asking the player what do you think about proposing a, to draw this game to the progress match and something a new one to see his reaction is this something that you think could be used or not? Mm. The player, no, he cannot win. So, what it is, his action is just to not lose. If you, so, if you're doing this, that the player is winning 1 0, and he's like, okay, what do you do? Uh, I'm asking more about asking him what, what do you think about proposing this to your opponent? And then the, 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 the guy is very likely to be okay. Because the other guy is never going to accept. So we're playing together, you're winning 1-0. There's no way you can win game two. Why would I, who has to win eventually, even if it just takes 37 more draws each, because you have no ways to kill, and you have too few workouts in your library, why would I accept to draw? I'd won. Uh, what I say in the situation is, for example, the, the library is not a matter because you record uh, something on top of library, with, uh, like the standard deck that just uh, means all library and then puts four on top of library. Yep. In this case, you cannot win, I cannot win. If it was one one over, it just keep playing. But the, 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 there's a difference. I mean, I am not stalling if I cannot, if I have a way to never lose. If I, if I have an, I don't know, uh, Academy Ruins and an artifact that I can sacrifice to do nothing, but if my opponent can't kill me, that's fine. He can, he can concede. We could draw, but I, he has to kill me. The, the, the situation uh, I brought with the Tamiyo thing, the player had to lose. He had no way he could avoid losing. So using the plot to have a goal is okay, but not to lose out. Because in this case, I'm just probably playing a bit of time or not. This is my goal. But I've not lost. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I, I, cannot, I cannot lose. In, in that situation you describe, so I'm not trying to eat up the clock. I'm just playing, but I cannot lose. Yeah, but strategically, my goal is just to continue going back until someone can stop this. And eventually, you will take the So you you have a plan, which is play this. Yes. So you have a plan, which is and if you are going back, you are going to come and take this. Uh, you can always play the game. As long as you are not changing your pace of play, as long as you are playing at a reasonable pace and allowing your opponent to keep moving through the game, you can always play the game. It's up to your opponent in a situation that, like you described where you basically lock them out to realize that they want to offer a guard, that they want to get out of that game in some way. You, if your opponent is making a terrible decision to continue playing a game that they shouldn't continue to play, you're allowed to let them keep doing it. There's plenty of times where I've seen combo decks have a lock in game one, and the opponent does not understand that they need to concede that game and keep going. The player in the combo deck is under no obligation to say, you know, you really should concede. They can sit there and continue to lock them out until they, they kill them in game one, 
takes more than that to do that because their opponent allows it to do that. As long as they're still progressing the game, as long as they're still playing at a reasonable pace, there has to be some change of pace or some, uh, some decision to change how you are playing that needs to stop. Just playing a game of magic and playing it perfectly reasonably is never going to be stopped. Stalling is like making things that don't change the game state all, all the time. That make nothing. Because you're making that only for the reason of gaining uh, time. Mm -hmm. if, if I can lose, even if I've got no cards, but I can put one back to top, like, that's exactly what Alexander said. I mean, I have a good board position, and my opponent could be story. <laughs> ah, I can't lose. What yes. is you realistically cannot win the game, but I mean, like, you would play high tide and high tide on top, so that you move, and so you can, and then, so why are you keeping playing? And you would say, okay, but I can still be done with the other fairies, which is not realistic at all. Is it better do that fast. <laughs> yeah. hey, I mean, a one-one flyer is a way to kill. Not exceptional, <laughs> but <laughs> again, like like I said, storing is about what you believe is happening. If at some point you believe you have gathered enough elements to constitute storing, that's the exact same reasoning as identifying cheating. You don't need proofs. Well, you talk to him, and if you believe he tells you the truth, you're good. You can watch for slow play from that moment. Storing is a... Is a cheating. Uh, it's, it's a it's a cheating like infraction. So it requires knowledge that it's bad and in, uh, intention. Sorry, it does not require uh, studying. Does not require knowledge that it's bad, but it requires intention to do something bad. You talk to him. You investigate. Yeah. And you see what comes from that. But what, what the problem is. Uh, he could think, I cannot win, but I can also lose the game. Then what happens? I mean, I can... Every... At, so, at some point, the opponent still need to kill him. I mean, for example, I have ultimate of Tommy you, and I keep passing turns, but every every once you play a creature, I make all the time Supreme Verdict, Supreme Verdict, Supreme Verdict, Supreme Verdict, killing all the creatures you have. You can kill me. So it's a okay game for the game? Yeah. I mean, game state is progressing. Yeah. Not overly. <laughs> <laughs> but there's always the possibility that you'll make the wrong play. Yeah. That that was a... there was a situation in Verona. One player had almost lost, but he was just trying to survive. And at some point, his opponent forgot to put the beast token out of the thra uh, Fractus. That brought the guy back in the game. On one draw. The guy forgot, he missed the kill window. He was playing a Kessig, um, Kessig Bunt. So he couldn't kill him. Or the guy goes, oh, sweet, Angel of Glory's Rise. <laughs> but, yeah, at some point the guy missed the, missed the trigger for the 3-3, three, three, and that puts the other back in the game. A game that was fairly lost before. Probably, bearing the mistake it was, 100% lost. But that was still not done, he still had a chance.
Thank you.